let me show you how you can get an image to follow a path. In this case, I'll have a hand actually draw a circle. Let's start by going up to the media pool, right clicking and create a new fusion composition. We'll just call it circle and drag that down into our timeline. Now let's swap over to the fusion page and we just have that one media out node. And we'll start by grabbing a background node and dragging that down in and connecting it to our output. Now the default output is black, but we're gonna go up to alpha and dial that all the way back. So we have transparency. This is just gonna give us a blank slate to draw on top of. Now with your background node selected, let's go up here and let's add a paint node. And now with your paint node selected, let's modify that a little bit and let's go over and choose the polyline stroke. And let's left click and draw a circle sort of in the middle of your screen here. Not too big, not too small. And that's not a really great circle, but I can fix that. Let me left click and hold out here in the gray area, draw a box around all of it to select all of those points. And up here, I'll just click on smooth and that'll smooth that out. Now I want to make sure my playhead is pulled all the way back to the beginning. And with that paint node still selected, I want to open up the stroke controls and I'm going to pull the right on all the way down to nothing and set a keyframe. And then I'm going to go about 40 frames in. That's completely arbitrary. Go as long as you want. And I'm going to open this right on all the way up and it'll set another keyframe. Now when I play through, it will draw that circle on screen. And I should only have two keyframes, the one at the beginning and the ones at 40 frames in. If you have any others that showed up in here, make sure you delete them. But then I'm going to keep that paint node selected, click on it again, hit control C and then hit control V and it's going to copy and paste that exact same paint node right after it. And here's where we do something different with that second paint node selected. Let's go up to the modifiers. Let's expand the brush controls and I don't want a line. I actually want to use an image. So I'll click on that image option and all the way down here, you'll now see I have the option to do do things like choose a clip, which is what I'm going to select. And I'm going to browse for that source file. I'm going to choose a hand with a pencil and it's actually here. You just can't quite see it yet. So I'm going to increase the size. Now there's a million hands with pencils. So let's do this with that second paint note still selected. Let's pull that playhead all the way back to the beginning. Let's change the right on endpoint to 0 0.001. I'm going to pull the spacing all the way down. That hand looks a little white. I need to change the blend mode up here. Let's click on merge. Now I can actually see that hand. And now I'm going to advance to the next keyframe. And what I want to do is change the right on start point right here to 0.999. And now you'll see I have a hand that sort of follows that paint line around, but it's not exactly where I want it. Let me go right about the middle here and I'm going to grab the center X and move that to the right a little bit and use the center Y and move it down. So the tip of the pencil is right on top of that line. Now I should have that hand following that line, but I want to ease some of those keyframes. So let's go to the upper right spline option. Click on that. Let's select all of these, make sure they're all enabled. I'm going to click right here so that I can zoom to fit and see all the keyframes. And I'm going to draw a box around every single keyframe that I can see in this spline window so that they're all selected and I'm going to hit F on my keyboard to flatten them out. That'll give me a little more ease motion in that animation. Now let's go back to the edit page and I'm going to move this up into track two and bring down a piece of footage of an Intel CPU into track one. And let's say I wanted to highlight that CPU corner key, that little arrow. Anyone who's ever swapped an Intel processor on your computer knows that one of the corners has a little arrow instead of a dot that tells you exactly how to line it up into the socket. And maybe I want to draw a circle around that to show that. Now I can't do a lot of modifications with this fusion clip, but if I right click on it and turn it into a new compound clip, let's call it circle. Now I can do things like right click on it and change the retime control to speed it up. Now it'll draw that circle a little bit faster. I can turn on the transform option right here, left click and hold on any of these corner keys. I can move this where I want. I can shrink it. I can rotate it. And now I can use this to make it look like a little hand is drawing a circle around something I want the viewer to pay attention to. If you want to learn more about how to edit videos with DaVinci Resolve or put them onto YouTube and grow a YouTube channel, try clicking the video I have on screen now or the ones that I'll link down below. Peace.